The delegate from Fairfax, Delegate Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise for a point of personal privilege. The delegate has the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, and ladies and gentlemen of the House, four years ago, our majority leader, the delegate from Alexandria, Delegate Herring, carried and passed an enormously important bill, HB 981, which directed, directed, Mr. Speaker, that Virginia join the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative. And in the years since, Virginia's participation in REGI is an unquestioned success. REGI's been one of our best tools to fight climate change while also returning investment to the communities all across the Commonwealth that need it the most. With hundreds of millions of dollars directed at flood prevention and mitigation and energy efficiency improvements for lower income Virginians who can least afford the cost of rising energy bills. We're gonna to vote today, Mr. Speaker, on a budget that does a lot of terrific things. But it omits from the bipartisan budget we sent to the governor language which would have put an end to the governor's plan to withdraw Virginia from REGI. Now, Mr. Speaker, withdrawing from REGI has always been an awful idea. But let's be clear about whose idea it was. As part of the governor's day one onslaught after his inauguration, he issued Executive Order 9, trying to have Virginia leave REGI with the stroke of his pen. Once he figured out he couldn't do that, he directed his Air Board to accomplish the withdrawal. But the Air Board can't flaunt the law either. And as we all know, there's lit litigation pending, which asks the court to recognize the very simple principle that only the General Assembly can repeal a law passed by the General Assembly. I like our chances, Mr. Speaker. And over the course of the last few weeks, Mr. Speaker, the governor has been intransigent in the budget negotiations we all were otherwise pleased to see take place in the spirit of bipartisanship, insisting under threat of veto that the budget language relating to Reggie come out. Mr. Speaker, this was and is the governor's idea. He owns it and will own it long after he has left office. The governor, Mr. Speaker, calls it a tax so he can shoehorn it into his cut taxes mantra. But if Reggie is a tax, then so are the additional fees Virginians will soon see on their electric bills, which the governor has approved, requiring Virginians to pay hundreds of millions of dollars to our utilities for money they want to spend on research and preparation to try to deploy small modular nuclear reactors here in Virginia. And Virginians will be paying for years those fees, whether SMRs work out or not. And guess what, Mr. Speaker? So as not to give the impression that he is totally abandoning the enormous need to address increasingly significant flooding all across the Commonwealth and try to replace the money that's being uh, taken from REGI and coming from REGI, the governor included in the budget we're voting on today $100 million, a paltry sum, I might add, Mr. Speaker, compared to both the need and the amount of money that was coming to Virginia for flood mitigation from REGI. He's included $100 million of, wait for it, Mr. Speaker, taxpayer dollars. That's right, a tax to go into the Community Flood Preparedness Fund. We wouldn't need to do that if we stay in REGI. We could use that $100 million elsewhere. I bet we could find, Mr. Speaker, in this chamber, 100 good ideas for how to spend that $100 million on things that would improve Virginians' lives, but we can't or we won't include it in this budget because the governor now has to try to backfill the Reggie money. Mr. Speaker, the budget we will vote on today is a great budget, historic in many ways. I am going to vote for it. But because of the governor's misguided intransigence, it is in one crucial respect, Mr. Speaker, to borrow a phrase, backward. It takes Virginia backward on one of the most important issues of our time. So I will vote today for the budget, Mr. Speaker, because of the long list of important advances it makes for the Commonwealth. But my vote will be tempered by great disappointment at an opportunity squandered by our governor. But also my vote will be filled with resolve to get Virginia back into Reggie just as soon as possible. This is not over. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.